Hey! Hey you, hey gear seekers, <laughs> I'm Nick. Uh, if you haven't seen our Power Mac G5 series, I've done a couple videos on this dual core Power Mac G5 that I bought a little while ago. And I promised you guys that the second I got some upgrades that would do like some updates and whatnot with whatever, with all the hardware that came through. So today is the day. It's probably gonna be our last video of 2021, but I'll, I just wanted to film this because I'm kind of keen, but I will pre-warn you that I have pre-tested some stuff before filming, so I can't show everything because uh, according to some forum posts, it wasn't going to be possible with the GPU that I bought, with the revision at least. But I'm here to show you that that is wrong. So let's jump in and take a look at the upgrades that I picked for my Power Mac G5, or the dual core PCIe version. Let's do it. About a month ago, I went on my little eBay spree and I decided to pick up some hardware and more specifically, I wanted to max out the RAM. So I got 16 gigs of DDR2. So 16 gigs, eight modules, all good to go. That came to around about 20 bucks. So with the cost of the system and the RAM so far, looking at $195, right? But that's not all. I did a bit of searching to find out what the best GPU for the Power Mac G5 dual core PCIe would be. And I came to the conclusion that it was probably gonna be the Quadro FX 4500. Uh, I could have got a GT 7800 or whatnot, but I was like, you know what? Quadro, let's put a Quadro in it. I mean, they're basically the same GPU, let's be honest, but Quadro. So this is where the story with the Quadro FX 4500 gets a little bit interesting. So on the Mac Rumors forum, there's a, a forum thread that I bookmarked a little while ago when I was looking up what I wanted to do with this system. And it basically said that there's only one revision of the FX 4500 that would work with the G5. But that is actually not true. To summarize what the forum post said, it was like, you know what? There's only one revision that works and it's the version of the actual PCB. It's like it's the first revision or whatever. And it has memory modules on the back side of the card and a heat spreader on the back side. And that's the only one that's gonna work. Not true. Now, what I think's happened with the forum post is people have been like, hey, this one works. It doesn't spit up any errors or whatnot. And you know, this one's definitely going to work. But what I decided to do because Okay, I only paid 20 Australian dollars for this. I was like, I only spent 20 bucks on it. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work and I can flash it back to a regular BIOS for a PC. I'm gonna try this anyway. I've got a bunch of mismatches saying, hey, the device ID for this doesn't match. I was just like, yes, yes, yes. And I flashed it and it worked. So that's the... The, uh, the bottom line, this revision here of this PNY card, this works no problem. I haven't had any issues with it. Obviously it's out of the system because I'm gonna show you a couple things that I figured out with how to install this a very clean way and a little bit differently to the way that I've seen people install these PCIe cards that require PCIe power separately. So a few little gear seeker-ish hacks. Is that a thing, gear seeker-ish? Anyway. Right, so I'm gonna quickly walk you through how to flash the BIOS without actually flashing the BIOS. Just, just what I did. So in the top of this forum post, there's a link to an archive with basically everything you need to flash a USB stick to boot into DOS. But there's a few caveats to this. Now this forum thread is quite old, right? What I would recommend, if possible, if you're trying to do something like this, to use a PC that supports non UEFI boot modes because chances are on a newer motherboard, this card's just not going to detect at all. And I had this issue. I wanted to test this. I put this in a 10th gen board that I had like a Z490 board. Didn't detect, I, pff, no surprises there. So I pulled out an older system. I've got a first gen Core i5 pre-built system that I use for this kind of stuff which is sitting right behind me and I use that to flash the card successfully. So check out the forum thread. There's a whole step-by-step -step instruction guide of how to prepare your flash drive 
and it's got the ROM included in the archive as well to flash the FX4500 Quadra. And that's the ROM that I used in that archive for this without any modification. Just to show you, this is the old pre-built. It's quite lackluster in like what actually works with it. You can see that I've actually got a vertical GPU bracket that's got a riser. So this is the way that I did it because there's no way in hell that this card is fitting in here. So basically I plugged it into this riser. For power, I use this pretty easy to find on eBay and Amazon. This is what all the miners are using. Basically it is a SATA power to PCIe power with a little breakout so you can switch it to a six pin as well. And I decided that this would be the best option for the Palomac G5 because I'm only using one SATA SSD and I kind of want to use the super drive and I don't want to sacrifice that Molex connector. So this is the way I did it. I would recommend that you have an older system to do this. So we just boot off the USB device. It's got a bunch of auto exec stuff that it sets up for memory and all that stuff. So I'll just show you what's on the stick. So I put a 7800 GT ROM on here just in case the Quadro ROM didn't work and it just destroyed the card because I had a little hack that I figured out, but I didn't need to do it. So don't worry about it. That's a step I'm just talking about for the sake of talking. But basically you've got MV flash and the Quadro ROM. So basically all you would do if the card was installed, now the system won't post with the card plugged in anymore because the ROM is being flashed. Uh, this is the command. Now this is also in the documentation for this, right? So basically you're giving it a bunch of flags and we're saying we want to flash quadro.rom, which is the second last file in the directory listing. And then usually you'd be like, hey, let's run it. No cards found obviously because blah, blah, blah. But you get the idea. That's how you would do it. The reason why I did this off camera is, you know, I thought to myself, if this doesn't work, then, you know, I'm gonna have to find out a different solution to this whole thing. And then, I didn't really want to make a video about something not working. I want to show you guys a solution to a problem because I find there's a lot of content that doesn't give you solutions. So this is the solution. The first upgrade we'll do is the RAM because that's actually kind of more complicated than changing out the graphics card. I, I showed how to do this in the parts where we did the system clean up. Still, it's still looking a bit dirty, but you know, it is what it is. Basically, you just need to remove the two front fans for the CPU cooler and we're just going to pop out all eight modules. We're not using any modules that have already been in here. Right, that's it. All eight of the most random RAM modules you've ever seen are going elsewhere. I'm probably just going to put them somewhere for use later or I'll sell them or something. I don't know. We've got eight modules to go in, each of which are two gig DDR2 modules at 533 megahertz or mega transfers or whatever you guys want to call them and yeah basically they just all need to go in these are a pacer modules with samsung memory on them and like i mentioned eight in total so well they're not going in in any particular order but this is the recommended ram speed for these macs now i didn't want to go ecc because there's always some uh, degree of this may or may not work. So at least with non-ECC memory, we will uh, most likely work because they didn't have any ECC in here before and we knew that worked. And actually some of the modules that were in here were the same, but slower, if that makes sense. I'm so excited for this. You may or may not be, but I, I really am. Just double check them all. These can be a bit uh, weird with them not clipping in all the way, but it seems to be all gravy. We're going to pull out this old 6600 LE, the lowest spec graphics card for these Palmag G5 PCIe. And we'll pull this screw out because we actually need to populate the slot well, both slots because it's a dual slot card. And this has a little mechanism that we saw on older motherboards and even PC motherboards where you have to lift up the tab, give it a jiggle and pull the card out. I'm using this little SATA to PCIe power adapter. I explained why I wanted to do it this way before, basically because it just makes it a 
bit nicer for my purposes really. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pass the adapter through this little gap up here. All right, so we can run the cable and we'll plug it into the SATA power down here. But what I'm using is a PCIe power extension cable, like what we'd use if we did a, a build or whatever. And I'm gonna feed that through so the cable comes out nicely so we don't need to worry about running cables over the front here. So it's not ugly, so it looks clean. Let's feed this up through here, there we go. Feed this up, we'll just keep pushing this heaps of length on this cable, we'll just keep going. There we go. We'll pull that through. Right now we've got PCIe power. We'll connect up these two. Right, so now our power is provisioned. We'll just let that live in there from now on. We've got our power for our GPU right here. I'll separate the additional two pins from that because we're not going to use it. Now, what I would recommend doing, now this is kind of, this is how I did it last time, is plugging the power in first, because it can get a bit tricky to plug in sometimes. And then we'll just line it up with the PCIe slot, click it in, and just like any other PC, well, this is not a PC, but you know what I'm trying to say. Two screws in, you can see I put an ugly black thumb screw in there because there was a, a screw missing and stuff, but whatever, you know. And Bob's your uncle. We have a Quadro installed with PCIe power and all that stuff because they don't usually have PCIe power and we're good to go. That's all the upgrades done that I wanted to do to this. So the RAM's fully maxed out. It's got the best graphics card that you get for it at the time. So it's as good as it would have shipped back in the day. Obviously the only real difference here from being the best is the CPU turning the dual core, not the quad core. Don't want to deal with that liquid cooling mess. I talked about that in the last couple parts. I'll put links to all that stuff in the description down below if you want to check that out at your own leisure. But let's see if this thing powers up and posts. I know the video card works because I, I tested this last week, but I want to know if the RAM works. So let's go power it up and we'll rerun through all the specs and all that stuff just to show you guys that this is all running. So let's do that. Alrighty, time for the moment of truth. Here we go, where's the power button? Come on mate, there it is. It's only louder because all the panels are off. There's the startup chime. There's the thing saying no signal. There it is. It lit up, saying that it's got sync. And here we are, desktop. And that battery's gone dead again. Okay, see look, it works, it works, see? The, the graphics card works, but let's see that all the RAM and everything is detected now too, right? So we'll go to about this Mac and we have 16 gigabytes of DDR2 SD RAM. We'll click on more info, get a memory first, and you can see that all the memory is detected correctly. That's not saying that anything about manufacturer or whatnot. That's okay, it doesn't matter but we'll go graphics and display. So you'll see now that the Quadro FX 4500 is fully detected. It says what slot it's in. It says the PCIe lane width, the memory 512 megs. Doesn't seem like a lot. It was a lot for its time. Blah, blah, blah. Device ID, everything's working. You can also see we're running at 1080p, 32 bit color. Core image is hardware accelerated. We've also got Quartz Extreme also supported as well. So that's the, the main thing that we need. You can see the acceleration is working fine. All the animations and stuff, we can use the shift key to slow it all down to show you that everything is super smooth. And that is it, really. Like, the, we've got heaps more content planned with this for kernel control and some alternative operating system stuff, but that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to get this thing fully maxed out so we can play around with it. But yeah, it's working. Also, I wanted to show one last thing before we moved on and whatnot is that it does actually work pre Mac OS environment as well. So that's the other thing that people are usually concerned about whether or not it's gonna work pre boot, but it works pre boot without any issue. And then, yeah, so when it first booted up, it didn't actually show the Apple logo, but this is basically showing you that 
at all of the parts of the boot, it works. The only reason why I didn't show it on this is because of the DVI to HDMI to DisplayPort adapter that I use with this system. But as you can see, it, it comes up. That's probably to do with the uh, resolution that's been set here, but that's also okay. I think that's actually more to do with the adapter that I'm using. It's kind of jank. But actually, before we move on to the last bit, I just wanted to show that it actually does support 4K resolution on this 4K display. But what you will see here is there's no resolution scaling or anything for high DPI in macOS of this version. You can see everything looks ridiculously tiny and it doesn't know what to do font wise. Right, but I guess with the later version of Mac OS, we probably won't see this problem. There is that version that's going around right now, which pulls all the good bits from Snow Leopard into an unofficial 10.5.9, which we'll probably get around to installing on this as well. We'll do a video about that too. Maybe there's some more resolution scaling stuff with that, but this is fine. This works exactly how I want it to. Hope you guys enjoyed this little, tiny little journey with finally getting my Power Mac G5 dual core fully upgraded, exactly to where I want it to be. We've got some other content for kernel control plan for next year where we're gonna go into Morph OS, we're gonna do some stuff with Mac OS Classic, we're gonna do a whole bunch of fun stuff. Also with Linux, we're gonna do some newer Linux distros and stuff that have pretty recent kernel versions for this as well. So we're gonna go into all of that over on kernel control, but that's, yeah, that's the main reason why I wanted this was to get this up and running so you guys can enjoy what we're gonna be doing next year. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you like the music you heard here, we make all the music that's available by clicking the join button, or you can catch that four hour mix that we did with the collaboration with Struthless Studios over in the description. I'll chuck it down there, you can watch it. If you've got nothing to do, you're gonna put some music on in the background to chill to or do whatever, go and listen to that. That was really fun to put together. It took a lot of work actually. Anyways guys, hope you guys had a wonderful 2021. We will see you probably next year. Maybe we'll squeeze one more video out. I'm your boy Nick with Gear Seekers. You peak, we seek, and yeah, we'll probably see you next year. Thanks for watching.